All right, let's cover this Arlington Cemetery thing. I wasn't sure if it was going to blow up, but it seems like it is gaining some traction here. Um, let's start with 18. This is an explanation of what happened. Because basically, on the day uh, commemorating the Afghanistan withdrawal and the soldiers that died on that day, uh, Trump went to Arlington Cemetery to make this into a political hit job on Kamala Harris because of the deaths that resulted from the Afghanistan withdrawal. Now, uh, if we had stayed in Afghanistan throughout Biden's uh, entire term, I think that more soldiers would have died than died on that day. Biden was right to pull out of Afghanistan, uh, even though the rest of his foreign policy over the past year has been atrocious. Biden did do some good things in that regard. Uh, Trump didn't withdraw from Afghanistan when he could have. He actually set up a deal in February of 2020 that had a 14 month timer on it where it was like, OK, tal the Taliban hold off on taking over until we go through this 14 month transition period. And so Trump had the opportunity if he got reelected to kick the can down the road again, because that would have matched with the timeline or to create a quagmire for Biden, which is exactly what he did. And Biden didn't, to his credit, actually, um, take the bait on that. He said, no, we're ending this. It's been two decades. Time to end the war in Afghanistan. So Trump is trying to use this to attack Kamala Harris. I do not think that voters are voting on the Afghanistan withdrawal of 2021 in the year of our Lord 2024. I think it is not a salient issue. I wish we were back in there. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Not sure that's a kitchen table issue. It's a uh, it's a news desk uh, editors of major uh, news outlets issue and nothing else. And, and that's what's so rich and fun about the way Trump's campaigning this time. It's like the most, you know, insidery, war hawkish, traditional Republican Tr trod over nonsense right like no one cares and in that effort he created a pr issue for himself so here's an explanation f uh, manu raju speaks with uh, the pentagon correspondent uh, on cnn oren lieberman and he basically talks about how the army had to put out a statement rebuking the trump campaign is the army saying in this rare statement Mano, this is a fairly remarkable statement, both, as you point out, because of the rebuke of the Trump campaign and then for standing up to the Arlington uh, National Cemetery employee who was involved in this. The statement doesn't mention the Trump campaign or former President Donald Trump explicitly, but it's also very clear to what it's referring. Here is a part of this statement. Let me read this to you. Participants in the August 26th ceremony and subsequent Section 60 visit were made aware of federal laws, army regulations and DOD policies, which clearly prohibit political activities. An Arlington National Cemetery employee who attempted to ensure adherence to these rules was abruptly pushed aside. ANC is a national shrine to the honored dead of the armed forces, and its dedicated staff will continue to ensure public ceremonies are conducted with dignity and respect. In that statement, the Army basically says the visit as it was carried out in Section 60, which is where fallen service members from Iraq and Afghanistan are buried, was a violation of federal law. That law explicitly states memorial services and ceremonies at Army National Military Cemeteries will not include partisan political activities. That's where they say the visit violated federal law. But afterwards, a member of the Trump campaign also suggested the Arlington employee with which this altercation happened was, quote, a despicable individual. And someone even suggested that she might have mental health issues. Here, the Army stood by their employee, praising her professionalism and saying it's an incredibly important and sacred job she has at Arlington National Cemetery. Once again, Manu, an incredible statement in this rebuke of the campaign and, of course, standing up for the employee involved in this. Uh, so the employee was a woman uh, that they that they shoved. It's OK. Oh, there we go. Uh, adult diaper commercials, I think. Thank you, CNN. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think that that um, was a uh, or gosh, I got I lost my train of thought. Basically, yeah. So that 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 uh, employee at Arlington ceremony was a woman who got she saying that she got shoved by the Trump campaign when they got into this altercation because they were trying desperately to photograph these sensitive sites, which is against federal law and against policy. Um, this is the photo here that they took. Uh, this is um, number 17. Here he is giving a thumbs up Trump 
in front of the headstone of one of the service members uh, killed in Afghanistan, um, with in the Afghanistan withdrawal with her family, right? And this is what was supposedly in violation um, of of the uh, policy. Giving a thumbs up is just uh, the, the, beneath it is we we won't show it. I think uh, beneath it oh, is the headstone. I mean. I mean, I'll show it. I've, I frankly. Yeah. It, there he is. Giving a, and G. G. She was a great soldier. Um. So the the this is like visual evidence that they violated the policy, and it is kind of astounding that the army made a statement. So, uh, Trump is dealing with a bad PR. He doesn't. He's too lazy to to address this head on right now. He he's just kind of in autopilot. So who does he send out? His pain sponge, J.D. Vance, um, he was asked here, this is 19, um, at a campaign event in Erie, Pennsylvania, by an audience member about this incident. And, uh, you know, gosh, what can, he, he's got to be, you know, as somebody who was in the military himself, I'm sure he's going to approach this issue with uh, a sober attitude and be clear that he respects the military and that the Trump campaign would never do anything to disrespect the military. Oh, wait, he's J.D. Vance. Yes. Ma'am, go ahead. Hi, Senator. Good to see you again. Ali Novello with CBS News. Um, I have two questions for you. That's a reporter. Uh, one, could you tell us more about the altercation that happened at the Arlington Cemetery? Um, and two, uh, what does debate prep look like for yourself and for Trump at this time? Well, I, I think, first of all, the altercation at Arlington Cemetery is the media creating a story where I really don't think that there is one. There is verifiable evidence. There is, there is verifiable evidence that the campaign was allowed to have a photographer there. There's verifiable, they were invited to have a photographer there. There's verifiable evidence that the families of these poor people who had their loved ones die three years ago at Abbey Road, they had, excuse me, Abbey Gate, those 13 Americans, a lot of them were there with the president. They invited him to be there and to support them. That's not an insult to the memories of their loved ones. They wanted Donald Trump there, and thank God that we have a president who stands with our veterans instead of one who runs away from them. Now we... All right, keep it up. That wasn't terrible, but you can't now help it, yourself. Yeah, I mean, it, it, is, it is amazing to me that you have apparently somebody at Arlington Cemetery, some staff member, had a little disagreement with somebody, and they have turned, the media has turned this into a national news story. You know what I think our veterans care a lot more about? That Kamala Harris's VP nominee lied about his military service. I think that our veterans care a lot more about that. And the other thing that our veterans care, the other thing our veterans care a lot more about is that three years ago, 13 brave, innocent Americans died and they died because Kamala Harris refused to do her job and there hasn't been a single investigation or a single firing. I, I don't, I don't, look, sometimes mistakes happen. That's just the nature of government, the nature of military service. But to have those 13 Americans lose their lives and not fire a single person is disgraceful. Kamala Harris is disgraceful. We're gonna talk about a story out of those 13 brave, innocent Americans who lost their lives. It's that Kamala Harris is so asleep at the wheel that she won't even do an investigation into what happened. And she wants to yell at Donald Trump because he showed up. She can, she can go to hell. <laughs> That's what I wanted to get to. She can go to hell. It, it, that was nonsense. Okay, so it's not the media. It's the literal U.S. Army. We played it just before. That is the statement that they put out. Well, and also, if just because some of the veterans said, hey, yeah, please make a uh, photo opportunity out of this place, <laughs> doesn't mean everybody who, like, yes. say, has people who are buried there, which, again, like... I, I, <laughs> This right. isn't my bag, but, no, but um, I mean, this is that's who us. she's standing up for is right. like, hey, yeah, I don't like the fact that uh, some yahoos and Trump were doing thumbs up and you could see, uh, you know, general dead, dead guys uh, 
you know, gravestone in the background. It's it's more just like they're they're trying to Benghazi her, right? They're trying to Benghazi. Is her that what he was Af- referring to? Afghanistan withdrawal. I think that's it, it. Was it was hard to even like the the cheers? They're trying to cheer at the Trump rally, but they don't care that much. And also this nationalism of like America, because Dave Rubin tries to do this too. Like Americans are are killed by Hamas on October seventh. Like I do not care that much who the nationality of people being killed <laughs> by different um, sort of kinetic warfares and stuff I, I like that like if, if we're invading a place like uh, almost like that's actually kind of what happens <laughs> yes and and here crowder spring this is the other point i wanted to make crowder spring uh string camera wrote in i'm active duty and know most of us know tim served honorably if anything desecrating arlington is at the biggest offense vance is a blue falcon this is exactly right this is why this is a story now is like you know matt in at the end of the day it's 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 just like a a gossipy kind of symbolic thing but it's because it compounds an already existing problem for them which is this horrible attempt at swift boating uh the situation with tim walls and saying that a guy who served 24 years in the army national guard lied about his service which is what six times more than vance served yes and he ended up not um uh, he ended up ending uh, retiring after 24 years uh, two months before yes the army national guard was deployed to iraq uh, and if he, he, there's no indications right that he anticipated that and made the decision based on that but if he did i would think that was incredibly honorable as well because then he ran for congress as an anti-iraq war democrat and the army national guard is not supposed to be in foreign deployment as jesse ventura pointed Start out in the nation yes he was not supposed to be there bush was doing that because he wanted to maintain this illegal horrific war in iraq so it's like Th- th- this story is is i think actually harmful for trump because of that already existing thing and the fact that there he can't be normal i wanted to play that whole thing because he ends it by saying kamala harris can go to hell and then repeating the tim walls thing about the des- about the military service they are the, the edge lording stuff it's just it, it it makes it turns people off it really does and the other thing about the the campaign is like you see they're just trying they're doing retreads swift boat for john Kerry, but for tim walls uh oh, benghazi yeah. for the afghanistan withdrawal for kamala harris they have nothing new to run on they'll do some sort of uh willie horton style uh this person was let off uh then they couldn't have and they uh, look at look at what they did they killed a little white girl yeah <laughs> so, aren't you aren't you pretty aren't you much scandalized? horrible yeah i mean like they that's what's interesting to me is that they 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 don't they don't know how to come up with a new idea how to run against kamala harris and tim walls they're just the attack lines that they're using are attack lines that they previously used they're trying to birtherism it again like jesse waters is is uh is touting that on his program so the the story in and of itself is more of just like a a scandal that you'll see on cable news but what it indicates about the trump campaign is what's more interesting to me. Um, Carolina Jeff, no joke, this Arlington thing ended up in our weekly intel briefing, which is unheard of in the army. You have to really oh, fuck damn. up to get the army to denounce you. Yes. So, I mean, that's this is the a thing. big story. Right. And like, and that's why, like, I, you know, uh, it's going to have traction regardless of whether I'm, I propagandize about it or not. Um, right. And what's interesting about it, I mean, look, like I my, saw... my stepdad would see this and be like, this is an outrage. Like, he's the, like, he's kind of like a, he's uh, somebody who I think of in my mind as like a centrist and moderate voter. And this is the kind of stuff that would piss off his patriotism right? yeah <laughs> you know? and it's like i don't know just like i remember how seeing the reaction to vets from uh, the kaepernick thing yeah <laughs> and it's just like damn i did not know you guys were that serious about that st-. it's like it, 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 it's it's more strange little culture from, from our li- lives yeah. right yeah um uh Mama Stoffley's, can y'all please explain this term swift boating? You say it a lot, but I have no clue what it means. It's it's a shorthand for uh, the attack on John Kerry's uh, Purple Hearts and military record that the Republicans deployed in 2004. Yeah, basically attacking his record of service um, uh, because he was, uh, he left Vietnam uh, as a pr- opponent of the war, uh, so much so that on the Nixon tapes, Nixon is talking, I think, to Kissinger being like, that Kerry's going to have a future in politics right. uh, one of these days, whereas George Bush uh, 
was a draft I think a draft dodger but at very least did like national guard service where he was a wall very regularly and mm-hmm. it's very it's the real uh, scandal um, and blue falcon people want to know what blue falcon means backstabber Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.